On today's episode of The Pot Thickens, I'll be showing you how I make a simple and delicious Indian chana dal. Hi, my name is Greg Cook and welcome to The Pot Thickens. I've created this channel to share my passion and love for food and the culture behind the food. I have been cooking ever since I was a young kid and I just love to put together ingredients, learn new techniques, learn new combinations of flavors and really understand the people behind the food that I make. I invite you to come along with me as we journey through food and please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for this channel. There's a lot of things I can do in the kitchen, but I really can't grow this channel without your help. Today I'm going to show you how I make a version of an Indian chana dal. There are many different kinds of dals or legumes used in India. Uh, this one today I'm going to talk about is the chana dal. This is a very popular and staple uh, dal of India, and it is basically a brown chickpea that's split. Of course the brown husk is gone, uh, but these are small a uh, type of chickpea found throughout India, and I'll show you my take on a chana dal recipe. So We're gonna start by first preparing our chana dal and cooking that uh, for the recipe. We're gonna take about one cup of the dried dal beans, um, put them into a bowl, and uh, we're gonna wash them really well. Now, uh, these are gonna be soaked for about four hours. Uh, four to six hours is typically enough for soaking. You want the dal to absorb some of the liquid. It's gonna about double in size. Um, you don't need to soak the dal, but if you do not pre-soak it, then it will take longer to cook. Uh, here you can see I'm washing it really well. I like to remove all of the dust that's on the dolls, make sure there's no um, starch that's sticking to the dolls and uh, get it really clean. Once you have the doll cleaned really well, cover it with a lot of water and set it aside to soak. After soaking for four hours, the chana doll was drained and rinsed and placed into my instant pot for cooking. To this, you wanna add water just to cover about a half inch to an inch over the doll. It's soaked up a lot of water already, so you don't need to put too much water in, and you want a little bit of liquid left at the end. So here I'm adding about a cup and a half to two cups of water. We wanna give the doll a little bit of seasoning at this point. So here I'm adding a healthy pinch of salt and about a quarter teaspoon of turmeric to the pot. I'm cooking this for about five minutes at high pressure in the Instant Pot, and then I'll let it slowly release and cool down before I open the pot. If you decide not to pre-soak your doll, you'll probably want to cook this for anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes to get the doll cooked. Let's talk about the dried spices I'll be using for this dish. I'm going to be using one tablespoon of cumin seed, one tablespoon of mustard seed, two teaspoons of garam masala, one quarter teaspoon of asafoetida or hing, and one quarter teaspoon of turmeric. Let me just pause here and talk a little bit about the spices I've chosen. Of course, across India, there are many different cultures and many different flavors that can be found, but I've chosen to use spices that cater more to my tastes. I'm particularly fond of South India cuisine, so I've chosen to use mustard seed and asafoetida in mine, which is typical of Southern Indian cooking. These are not generally found in most chana dal recipes, so you might find that a little bit unusual, but I find the flavors absolutely wonderful. I'll be using some whole dry red chilies to spice things up. You could use some Kashmiri chili powder or some cayenne pepper instead. I'll also be using five cloves of garlic, finely chopped. A good inch of ginger, finely chopped.
one medium sized onion chopped, I'll be using some chopped fresh cilantro in this as well, and I didn't show it, but I did take one large jalapeno, de-seeded it, and sliced it lengthwise into pieces. Well, let's start cooking the spices and aromatics that make for the basis of our flavors in this dal recipe. I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of oil to a heated pot. To that, we're going to add the cumin seed and the mustard seed and wait for those mustard seeds to pop. It might take a couple of seconds because the oil isn't quite hot enough yet. I'm going to cover it to keep those mustard seeds from splattering out at me. Once you hear those mustard seeds popping, you know it's about time to move on. And so next I'm going to add my dried red chilies to this. Stir that just for a couple of seconds, and then add in my onions. I'm also gonna add in the turmeric, the garam masala, and the asafoetida, and get those heated up in the oil as well, and stir that into the onions. I'm also gonna throw in the green chilies that I chopped. And the garlic and the ginger are going in. You wanna cook this down until the onions get nicely softened and almost caramelized and all the flavors integrate well together. Uh, if it gets a little bit dry, you can always add a little bit of water to keep it from sticking to the bottom. Once the onions get some color on it, you're gonna to wanna to add some tomato to this dish. I'm using a jar of a homemade sauce that I made from my garden tomatoes this summer, but you could take four or five fresh tomatoes and chop them up and throw them in here or puree them in a blender and add that puree to this mix. Another good option is to use a can of diced tomatoes or a can of your favorite tomato sauce. Tomato is a really important component of Indian food because it provides not only a sweetness and a savoriness to the dish, but it also provides some acidity that helps balance out all the flavors that are going on in this. This is also a good time to season your dish with some salt. I'm adding about a tablespoon of salt here, and uh, then I'm gonna let this tomato mixture cook down until most of the liquid is evaporated. While those tomatoes are cooking, I'm gonna check on the dal. This has been uh, cooked for five minutes at high pressure and then left to naturally release the pressure. It's been sitting for about 20 minutes or so after that finish. And you can see the dal is now nicely soft and, and ready for use. You can see that my tomato mixture has nicely cooked down and you can see a little bit of the oil separating from the tomatoes. That's when you know it's ready. And at this point, I'm going to add the dal along with all of the liquid that was left in that dal also. We're gonna mix this all together now and check the liquid content. If there's not enough water, you can always add some at this point. Um, otherwise, you can just let it cook down until it's the right consistency. We're gonna also add in some of that chopped cilantro to this uh, dal to let that flavor infuse into the cooking. This is then gonna cook for about 15 minutes or so covered until all the flavors and everything integrate well.
It's been about 15 minutes and this is cooked down really nicely and it just smells delicious. The aromas and the flavors are coming through nicely. Now, I wanna give you a little tip. This is a little bit uh, thin for me and so what I'm doing is I'm smashing some of the dal against the side of the pot just to crush it a little bit to thicken the sauce a little bit more. That will make a really nice texture for your chana dal. You can also take a portion of this out and blend it to provide a puree that will thicken the dal as well. And that's it. It's all done. It's ready for serving. You can serve this dal up any number of ways. It's often uh, served with a bowl of rice or today I'm having it with some homemade chapatis, which is an Indian flatbread. That'll be the subject of a future video, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for following along. If you like what you see, please uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and like this video because I can do a lot of things in the kitchen, but I can't grow this channel without your help.